All right, we've got one more keynote session before we get into our breakout sessions, and then after that will be lunch. So uh, here's one more here. We've got the general manager here at Watson Data Platform, uh, who came to IBM uh, three years ago through the acquisition of Cloudant, and he's bringing sexy back to quote to cash. Yes, indeed. He'll tell you more about that. A little fun fact about our next speaker. He climbed Mount Kenya and lived in Africa for six months. So please welcome Derek Shuttle. All right. Morning. Morning. I, I'm the last gig before lunch, so if you don't engage, I'll talk forever. Seriously. Um, so I, it's funny, they, they put me just after John in that last slide, you know, the relation between technology and people. Uh, we're going to be talking about what IBM and Atlas are doing around cognitive and quote to cash. So, but before we do that, I, I was thinking about a good lead-in that uh, I think captures where we are and where we're going. So, if we could uh, run the clip, and then we'll uh, we'll get to the presentation. Okay, so part of that was making my, uh, my, my family loves the office, and I, I figured that that was going to be the best way for us to talk about the relationship between computers and people. So I, I spend my time at IBM. I, I came through an acquisition, as John mentioned, uh, three years ago. And uh, we had built a company that was in and around managing data at a global scale. And a global scale meaning you had web and mobile applications being distributed, and there was always the consideration of, well, how can we actually get access to the data faster with more efficiency? And my time at IBM has transitioned into how do we shift into a platform? You know, how do we shift into a world where we're not assembling different products, we're not taking um, all these individual bits and bytes and trying to rationalize them, we're actually building on top of a platform with enterprise applications. So, a bit of backdrop, and I would imagine most of this is going to be head nodding for the people in attendance, is that every industry is up for disruption. So the feeling Dwight just had, if you looked at his face, most companies at some stage, at least in the last year, I would argue, is in a room somewhere realizing that their business is changing. I don't know if it's as dramatic as that for an office uh, like that, but it's changing, right? And we at IBM, and I think many of us in the audience, if not all of us, you know, view that as an opportunity. Right? It is an opportunity to help us do more things more efficiently and at greater scale, and that really is the revolution that's underway right now. So what's holding us back? So you have a whole set of collaborative resources, and those resources are people, they're technologies, there's processes, and 80%, if you look at the research in terms of whether it's third parties or the work that you do with your clients, the work that you do with your teams, 80% are unable to collaborate across data. And if you believe that data is the natural resource that whether it's unstructured, semi-structured, fully structured, it's informing a lot of the work that we're doing, right, globally in our respective businesses. 84% of the data that we have is fragmented, meaning when you do get access to it, it's only a piece of the puzzle. So if you're trying to make a decision, and whether it's a pricing, a packaging, promotion, positioning, you're only given one part of the view, one segment of the view, instead of the, it, the data in its entirety. And then last, and I think most importantly, is speed. IBM's a big company, and it was, I still to this day, uh, you know, our group is thousands, but we're part of 380,000. Every company, regardless of size, is at this intersection where they, how do I get more people engaged with the data in meaningful ways? So this era of computing that we call cognitive. So can I ask for hands in the audience that have heard of Watson, IBM Watson? I will let the marketing group know that that's pretty good, actually. I was surprised. That's a, like 70% hands went up. That's pretty good. That is an era that we feel is this next chapter. It's the next decade of computing. And that's a reflection of, if you look at this timeline, the amount of data that's been created, the amount of data that's unstructured, meaning it's sitting within systems that we can't necessarily capture and then understand and take action against. And then most importantly is that the data is sitting within systems that are managed in highly constrained environments. 
So how do we as a, as a community, as a society, as a, you know, a technology economy, how do we take advantage of that? How do we invest in a platform? How do we make investments in technologies that allow us to take advantage of it? And that's what our team spends all of their time doing. You know, looking at how we can partner with our clients, how we can partner with um, our ecosystem to provide a data platform, an environment that allows them to take advantage of the core systems, but infuse it with AI, infuse it with cognitive. So this is the definition of cognitive. And I, the way that I like to kind of net it out is cognitive is the relationship between humans and machines. And hopefully it's better than the one that Dwight has with the computer, right? This is about opportunistic, opportunism, improving the engagements between humans and machines. The technology that sits within those, in that context is artificial intelligence, it's natural language processing, on and on and on and on and on. Um, that technology is what we're spending all of our time on and trying to demystify it, make it more accessible, make it so that we have a really easy and interactive way so that we can all get to a state of what we think of as a cognitive business. We're all in different stages of this journey. Every business, and I was fortunate, I, I sat at a, a dinner last night with other executives from some other companies, and we were talking about how do you embrace the rate and pace of innovation? And from the previous conversations around self-service, cloud, open source, artificial intelligence, on and on and on, how do you keep pace? And how do you put it in a path, how do you get on the path to becoming a cognitive enterprise? Because you want to take advantage of the transformative capabilities, you want to be able to provide data so that people can take action and be iterative, so on and so forth. And you want to be that from, and I'd say last night at dinner, that's a cultural change. It's a cultural change. And so when you think about quote to cash, contract lifecycle management, all of the systems that are required to enable your business, I, I jokingly said, you know, uh, we're bringing sexy back to quote to cash. Right, because making those systems intelligent, making those systems reactive, making those systems so that they can help field organizations, uh, teams supporting those field organizations more efficient is key to that cognitive journey. So when we started talking about um, how we could partner with or work with different companies, Aptis uh, certainly came to mind. And we've been working as IBM in a lot of capacity, in different capacities with them. But if you think about our mission within the context of becoming a cognitive business, we want to make it simple. We want to make data simple. We want to make it so that our partners and then subsequently their clients are able to access the data that's relevant to them at the right time. We want to do it in a trusted and secure environment. We want to be able to do it in the cloud, in a cloud native manner. And we want to be able to do it in a manner that allows you to take advantage of the rate and pace of open source. All of this within the context of Aptis and our partnership runs on a platform that I'm speaking to in terms of a intuitive, intelligent data platform so that applications like Aptis can run atop, so that you don't have the obligation to maintain the complexity, you don't have to necessarily worry about all of the different nuances of getting access to the right data at the right time to provide it to the right end user. So we have a um, demo that we're going to run you through, and I, I'm incredibly excited about it for a number of reasons. You know, I, I grew up mostly in smaller early stage technology companies, and uh, early in my career, a CEO told me, you either sell things or build things. And I have always been on the sell side. And the build side, as it's become easier to build things, it's become uh, more intuitive and you can move more quickly, the biggest lament you'd have as a salesperson, especially in a large organization, is I can't get a quote quickly enough. I don't really understand what the price is, what the elasticity is. They wouldn't use that word. They'd use a whole other set of words. They don't necessarily understand what other benchmarks have been set for the price in the product in a geo in a respective market. So if you step back and think about IBM, we have close to 100,000 salespeople, generally speaking. We have thousands of SKUs. We have thousands of touch points across our broader ecosystem where we're having conversations all the time about how to price and how to price in a world where it's digitally discovered, it's in a timely fashion, you can make a decision and you can get the right outcome. So in partnership with Aptis, we built a cognitive pricing application. So at this time, let me invite Elliot Yama up, who's vice president of product marketing there and my partner in this. Come on up, Elliot. I'll give, you, I'll give you the pickle. Okay. So 
we're going to have a little interchange like any demo, okay? Uh, but in my mind, this really is, if I'm a salesperson, I'm sitting over your shoulder, that's the audience I'd love for you to speak to. Fantastic. Love to. So let's just set a little bit of context, yeah. right? Because to be this sexy, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. So to, uh, to show you what we're doing, we're talking about cognitive price optimization. So that that's means sexy, by the way. Way Everyone sexy. Everyone agree that's sexy? Cognitive price? I mean, can't beat that. Come on. Come on. I told you, see? Love I can that. hear it. I know. So what we're doing is we're balancing win probability versus maximizing revenue. And we're doing that in the context of this deal for this customer. Right. So <clears throat> just to help people understand what's happening is I'll be a user inside of Aptus CPQ, and when I'm configuring my quote, I'll actually send information to the Watson data platform. Right. It'll run against a complex set of algorithms, and it'll send back to me the recommended price as well as the win probability for this deal, assuming I accept that price. And the piece I think interesting for everyone to understand is that going to the data platform at that time is not just a small container set of data, it's also a lot of other, whether it's exogenous, it's proprietary, it's influencing all of those decisions in real time. Exactly. Yep. History, all of that stuff. And the, the beautiful thing is that I have to do very little. I'll click a button and the hard work all goes on behind the scenes. Love it. Let's show it. Let's bring up the demo and show these folks how this works. Okay, so I'm inside of Aptus CPQ. And if there are any customers in the audience, just add zeros to that. Just put more zeros <laughs> on all of that. Exactly. Okay. So I've selected a number of products here. So I've got Bluemix and DashDB and Watson Analytics. And so I'm ready to present the quote to my customer. And if I scroll down here, you can see the extended price. I'm going to click this button that says Cognitive Pricing. It's going to give me a recommendation. So right now, what's happening is the information is being sent over. The compute cycle is running on some server somewhere, and it's coming back with the recommended discount as well as the win probability for this quote. From there, it's pretty easy, Eric. I just accept it. And when I do, it'll push that information back in. It'll adjust the quote. Now, here's one other piece as well. We're using rules and advanced math. Right. So let's just say when I scroll over here, you can see I've got green guidance telling me this is a go. But I'm thinking that I'd like to do something you know, richer for my customer. And so rather than a 25% discount, I want to do a 50%. I'm feeling generous. When I do that, what you'll see is that it's no longer automatically approved. Yeah. So just that alone, if you think of, at least I can speak for most businesses I've been in, that's days, weeks of back and forth trying to get to appropriate guidance, and especially if you're running globally, just that ability to get into a salesperson's hand or into the field organization a decision in that, that time manner, a huge delta, huge opportunity. This is tremendous in terms of the speed it provides as well as the control. Right. So anything else we want to go through? I think that's it on the demo. I think we've got one more slide. Okay, great. So. If we go back to the slide deck, so the, uh, here, we'll click it forward. So hopefully what you saw in just a moment there is enough to give you a, a glimpse into what we're trying to do with Aptus. Uh, there is a demo pod in the back, or rather the front of the uh, convention center, or what is this, a massive warehouse. Um, spend time with it. Uh, from IBM's perspective, and I, I certainly can speak from the team at Aptus, we're incredibly excited about this. We think this has the chance to change the way, the rate and pace of how the field engages and how the subsequent backend systems work to make it easier and more consistent and governed for us to provide pricing and packaging for clients. So thanks for the time this morning, and thanks for hosting us. Thanks, Elliot. Thank you. Come on, take that with us.